Ladies and gentlemen, this is Team Dida Boxing Promotions. Kakiso, this is the rumble in the ghetto. After this, the ghetto will never be the same again. This next bout, ladies and gentlemen, is in the middleweight division and is scheduled for six rounds. Let's have a look at the tail of the tape then. Five years older is Mbubu. He's got a lot more experience as well. Both the same height, both the same reach, and both very much uh, within the middleweight weight limits. There's the fight records of them. Seven and seven for Augustine Motata. Four knockouts, only five knockouts in 24 fights for Klonani and Bubu. 11 wins, 11 losses. And you, just, you just look at that sort of situation, you think, well, there can only be one winner in it. But boxing is not that predictable, is it? I'm expecting a clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. May the best man win. Shake hands. Very short instructions. The referees do go to the change rooms and give bigger instructions to the boxers before they get anywhere near the ring. So just the final instructions coming in the center from the third man in the ring, Ben Klapai. The start of a scheduled six-rounder. The southpaw is uh, Augustine Matata. And in the orthodox stance is Kalani Mbubu in the maroon trunks. Already a swing and a miss from Kalani Mbubu. Only five knockouts in his 24 fights so far. He's only had 11 victories. Two draws and uh, 11 losses, and already he's starting to pour his own nose. So there must have been a shot that connected there from Augustine Matata. Never easy when you're fighting uh, orthodox versus uh, a southpaw boxer because you've got to stand on the outside. Be careful not to stand on each other's toes. Nice little body shot there, I must say, from Kalani Mbubu. Matata needs to use this straight right because he's fighting a southpaw. A straight right followed with follow, follow up with the left too. Those are punches for a southpaw. Looks he a little bit on the low it. side from Matata. So, Bubu in the southpaw stance. Big swings and misses from the Ulundi based Olani and Bubu. And again, two boxes that uh, have come to fight. There's no doubt definitely, about it. Nobody's standing back for this one. Definitely, they've came to fight. I don't see this one going, going the long distance. It's going the short route. Some nice body movement from Augustine Matata. It almost looks like one of those feeling out rounds between the two fighters. There's the traditional straight left hand from a southpaw boxer. And uh, Bubu trying to go straight down the middle of the defense of Augustine Matata. It's nailed with a bit of a, a left hook, does Matata on the break. These are men fighting in the middleweight division, 72.574 kilograms. Starting to get towards the big boys of boxing. Middleweight, super middleweights, where my partner tonight in commentary, William Khare, won two world titles in the super middleweight division after starting his career in in welterweights, moved up to uh, super, mid, super welterweights into the middleweight division, super middleweights eventually as a world champion. It's a good right hand from Matata. You can see that Mbubu is trying to catch Matata with an over left. He throw that over left, I think, two times or three times in this round, it, and it does not land it. It's a nice uppercut from He's Matata. He's trying to catch Matata with an over left. Bubu still going to the body as you're 10 seconds away from the end of round one of a scheduled six round fight in the welterweight division. Again, there's a little bit of a low blow from Augustine Matata. No call from Stop. referee Ben and Klepai as we come to the end of round number one. Jab, it come down. So I went jab, jab, uppercut. Okay? And one, two, fast. Bam, bam. Okay, remember chest, huh? Bam, bam. You can feel the hook. Huh? He's trying to come with hook. I want to catch hook and come back with hook. Remember, I tell you, bam, bam. Okay. 
Seconds have been called for the start of round number two. Interesting instructions coming from uh, Matata's corner. He wants a jab, but he wants a left-right combination and then an uppercut what? as his opponent comes in. Let's see how that goes because Mbubu, Mbubu does seem to just duck over a little bit when he comes forward. Yes, yes. Very good instructions from Damien uh, Durand. I like when he, tell, he tells Matata that he needs to catch the punch and come back with the same punch that his opponent throws. And they're both talking about left hooks. Yes. Nice stiff jab coming through from Augustine Matata. And it's nice to see we're in the third fight of the evening of a scheduled six. And uh, we're starting to see a little bit of uh, more established boxes coming in and, and utilizing that jab, which is uh, something that, uh, well, we should have seen in the first two fights. Yes, and I like what Matata is doing. It clearly shows that he listens to his corner because he's doing what the, his corner told him. He's throwing the jab and the right uppercut. And it's similarly, it, it, can, it can work. Well, there's the uppercut. He was a little bit closer that time because the first time he threw it, he, he missed by a little while. But uh, that time he caught. There he goes for the left hook, blocked by the gloves of um, Fubu. But as you said, you know, clear instructions from Damien Durant. Yes. And the box is listening. Yes, I'm, I'm very impressed with, with Matata because it's a boxer that listens to his corner man. You know, you can see that he's doing what his corner told him to do. The danger, I suppose, of uh, the instructions coming through for Augustin Matata, and we're seeing it here that if he if he if he throws the left-right combination with a with an uppercut every single time he gets into close proximity, it becomes a bit predictable. Yes, and 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 the thing is, uh, whenever Matata throws the punches, he bends. That's why he's open for an uppercut. Very little coming forward from. Olani and Bubu at the moment, the man from Kazil and Natal as the counting based Kinshasa born Matata looks uh, the real part at the moment. These are both big men, both looking wonderfully conditioned, to be honest. Definitely, they look fit. Very good nice. punches from Matata. And that's a very great good right hand. And a little bit too late. Punches. But very a good goes down. There was a right to the good. body, a bit of a left punches. to the body, right to the top. Four. And uh, Matata Five. with some wonderful punches. Six. Mouth guards come Seven. out of the uh, mouth of Kvolani and Bubu. Takes the eight count Lisa. from referee Ben and Klepai. And uh, we'll look to continue. Time called by the referee so that the mouth guard can be uh, rinsed out a little bit. So that's giving Bubu a lot more time to recover, to be honest. And yes. maybe a little bit unfair on Matata. Yes. One can't uh, criticize Bubu for spitting out the mouthpiece. Yeah. I, th I just think he was caught with a great punch. And it's very dangerous to fight with... Uh, without a, a, a gum guard, it's very dangerous. Yeah, certainly not recommended, that's for sure. So a big sigh from Augustine Matata. Is he going to look to finish it here? We are only 26 uh, seconds away from the end of a scheduled uh, yes. round number two out of uh, six. And then he now he goes to the body, goes upstairs. And Bubu trying to fight himself out of a corner here to get to the end of round number two. So showing some bravery here is the Ulundi-based boxer. Right, right, right. And uh, he might right. just be able to survive until the end of round two because there's less than 10 seconds remaining. Matata needs to throw the punch Stop. that knocked his opponent out. It's a straight right. He was supposed to throw that straight right again. Unfortunately, he did not do that. It was a great and round. And survived the it round. It was a great round for Augustine Matata anyway. I mean, he came out in... He listened to his corner's instructions, he got, he got the uppercuts going, and then eventually he caught his opponent with a lovely body punch, and then he went upstairs with that lovely right hand. He said, there, there was a lovely right-left combination, there's the right hand, and there was a little bit of delay, and Bubu almost thinking about whether he should go down or not. It's a beautiful right hand, isn't it? So it's the work to be done in the corner of Kalani and Bubu, otherwise he might just be heading towards his... 12th defeat in 25 fights. A little bit of a shake of the head from the man who just at the beginning of this month was fighting for a WBF international super middleweight title. So the two boxers meet in the center of the ring for the start of round number three of a scheduled six rounder in the middleweight division. Bubu trying to get off to a quick start. 
Nice punches from Mbubu. It's a good left hand from Mbubu as well. But the straighter punches coming from Matata. He's very watchful, Matata. There he goes for that uppercut that his corner's been calling for, Damien yes, Durant. Yes, yes, Kevin. I can tell you now, the uppercut is the punch that is going to drop Mbubu. Well, he got dropped no. in the straight right hand a bit earlier on, which is a great yes, punch. Yes. But certainly, Matata is the man who's... Uh, Got the upper hand at the moment. Because, you know, Kevin Mbubu is definitely open for an uppercut. As I've said, when Matata throws the punches, he bends down, you know, and he doesn't protect himself correctly, you know. Well, it's interesting that Mbubu is going for the right uppercut instead of uh, potentially the left uppercut. So he's going on the inside with the, with the right uppercut and then looking to, to bang the big left hand in as a, as a southpaw. The thing is, he needs to throw the right uppercut. Oh, what a lovely right hand that was from Matata. He needs to throw the right uppercut and come back with the left two. You know, making sure that if he misses him with the right uppercut, he can catch him with the left two. Matata, very watchful at the moment. Bubu, though, hasn't taken any major punishment in round number three of a scheduled six-rounder in the middleweight division. We are in Cajiso at the Memorial and Recreation Center. And again, that right hand just drops a little south of the border. Big right hand from Matata. But he handled it rather nicely, Mbubu. I think he was moving onto the back foot. Then Matata tries that uppercut that his corner's been uh, instructing him to launch. And then uh, just told not to hold his opponent down is the man who's got seven wins in seven fights so far. The only way that Mbubu can stop uh, Matata to throw that straight right he needs to close the gap. You know, he needs to close the gap and start throwing the punches to the body. That's all. Because as long as he's opening the space like this, he's a sucker for a straight drive. Well, it was a nice jab that came in from Mbubu, but not much behind it. He's not throwing combinations. It's tagged by a little wayward Augustine Matata straight right hand. And then he goes for the body with, a, with an uppercut. So he's throwing uppercuts both to the body and to the head is Augustine Matata. Looks to be well in control of matches. There's a straight right hand once again. Rocks the head back of uh, Kolani and Bubu. Don't push your opponent away, says referee Ben Ntapai. The signal for the end of round number three. It's been a little bit of a quieter round from Augustine Matata for some reason. The ace is landing with much many punches, and he's probably going to shade the round by 10 to 9 on our unofficial scorecard. But uh, a better round for Kolani. Yes. And it's a, it's a quiet round because both boxers, they forgot using their jabs. That's why it was so quiet. The fans loving the action. At the rumble in the ghetto at the Kajisa Memorial and Recreation Center. It's a good start with that left hook from Mbubu. So, so Matata not the only fighter to uh, land punches. But you must put pressure. I want him by the ropes. Push him back. Work right. Jab, jab, right. One, two. Get him by the ropes. Then body uppercut hook. Body uppercut hook. Put pressure. Okay. Put pressure and you can make finish. Put the pressure. Put the pressure is the call from Damien Durant in the corner of Augustine Matata. He certainly seems to have the power power to end it a little bit earlier on. And as we Red. said, you know, both the boxers almost taking a little breather in the middle of the fight. We are halfway through the fight number three of the evening at uh, the fight called Rumble in the Ghetto in Cajiso. It is um, Bubu in the maroon trunks, Augustine Matata in the white. And we are... Uh, Halfway through this scheduled six-round fight in the middleweight division. Now, let's see if the instructions are being adhered to by Matata. Very clear instructions, you know. I, I think some of the uh, good things that are coming out of the corner of Damien Durant, he's not giving his boxer miles of instructions. Just two clear instructions. You know, otherwise, you just confuse your boxer. He doesn't know what is, what's going on out there. And, and, and he's giving correct instructions. If he can, Matata can listen to his corner, he'll definitely win this fight with the stoppage. He's right, Damien, by telling his, his, his boxer that he needs to push his, his opponent backward. Because what I see here, Mbubu, 
is one of those boxers that they, that cannot fight going backwards. They only know how to fight going forward. And if Matata can put more pressure on Bubu, Bubu will be in trouble. Well, Bubu is trying to get onto the inside, and when he's doing that, he gets caught coming forward by Augustine Matata. Gets him tagged into a corner and throws uh, left and right uh, combinations. That one came off the gloves. Then he goes uh, downstairs into the midriff of uh, his opponent. And uh, there, Ben Trapai asking the boxer, that's Matata, to keep the punches up. And we have seen a couple of the punches going a bit south of the border. Halfway then to round number four of a scheduled six. A straight right hand, and it almost looks as if Mbubu might start getting a little bit on the fatigued side because that punch looked very weary indeed. Yes. And Matata must not, must not stop putting pressure on Mbubu. Because if it stops, he's giving him a chance to survive the round. Again, he goes for the uppercut on the inside. The work rate of Augustin Matata, not quite, I don't think, uh, what his corner was looking for. And I'm not sure whether he's trying to save himself for the latter stages of the fight. There's only another two rounds remaining. Looking across the ring, his corner is calling Matata to fight a little closer to Mbubu and try and end this early. That's why I'm saying that this corner is correct by saying that he must put pressure on Mbubu. That's a nice right That's hand. That's the only way he can stop Mbubu. But he's moving forward all the time and there's no uh, doubt that he's dominating the fight as he goes downstairs with the right hand and he's, he seems to be throwing a lot more right hands then instead of leading with the jab and opening up uh, the fight a little. And again Matata has forgotten to throw the straight right. And that straight right worked for him. It knocked his opponent on the second round, I think. Well, that's a little better with a right hand. Just as you said, that he threw almost a, a hooky right hand. But we're coming towards the end of round number four of a scheduled six. And Mbubu will survive another round because Augustine Matata, while he's got the firepower, just doesn't seem to be able to carry that firepower for a three, minutes, for a three minute round at the moment. The thing is, Matata, if he can listen to the instructions that they give him in the corner. He will win this fight with a stoppage. We haven't been to the scorecards uh, this evening so far. We're in fight number three of a scheduled uh, six fights on the card here. Some of the action from round number four. You see some of those straight punches are still working for uh, Matata, although you got caught with a hook there from Klonani and Bubu. He certainly isn't out of this one and you can take nothing for granted in the world of boxing. Yes, you mustn't. You mustn't. It ain't over till the fat lady sings. The South African middleweight title is vacant at the moment. This is not a title fight, by the way, but you've got fighters like Alfonso Tissen, Baron van Rooyen, Younger Betani, who's the Eastern Cape champion. Alfonso Tissen, the ABU hey. South hey. title holder in the South African middleweight division. Start of round number five then, and they start with the right hand from Augustine Matata. You know what Matata needs to do. Whenever Vubu throws his jab, he needs to hit the straight right. Every time when Vubu throws the jab, he needs to hit the straight right and come back with the left hook. Seems to be a little bit more compact from Kalani and Vubu coming into round number five, and he seems to be the more aggressive of the two fighters. There's a little bit of blood on the trunks of uh, Augustin Matata as well, but that's because his own mouth is bleeding. It's not uh, from his opponent. And now Matata now is fighting a wrong fight. He was told by his corner to pressurize Mbubu. The only way you can beat Mbubu is by, by pressurizing him. Mbubu cannot, is, is one of those boxers that cannot fight going backward. They can only fight going forward. But, but at the now, moment, it's Matata who's going backwards. Now, you see, he's doing things easier for his opponent now. A little bit of loose tape on the right glove of uh, Kolani and Mbubu. But so far, this is not a bad round for Mbubu. And Matata, Matata can't take anything for granted. He mustn't. He mustn't. Because if he, he, go, he takes a step back, he's giving Mbubu a chance. Now he's looking for uh, the left hook on the outside of the right shoulder of uh, Kalani and Mbubu at the moment. And Mbubu, that seems to be revitalized here later on in the Definitely. fight. Definitely. And I love, I love the way he moves his head now. This has certainly been an entertaining one. We've had two technical knockouts so far, but nice to see a little bit of entertaining boxing going so far. Nearly uh, five rounds of action in the middleweight division. And uh, while Mtata certainly was the more aggressive of the two boxers in four rounds, 
He's uh, certainly on the back foot here in round five. Yes. And if Mvuvu can come back with that, can hit an over left, Matata will go down. Suddenly Matata looking to go to the body with both left and right punches. Again, they're quite marginal to the belt of his opponent. And the referee allowing the action to continue. He's very watchful, he's Augustine Matata. And again, as we saw in round number four, just not enough action. Bubu tries to go for the big left hand. It's a swinging and a missing one. But uh, he was almost leaning over backwards when he threw it, and it was very little chance of it landing anyway. The no. punch, he missed with the punch because he's far away. He needs to get closer to Matata. Then he throws that punch. 25 seconds away from the end of round number five and a scheduled six-round fight in the middleweight division. Augustine Matata looking to go 8-8 eight and eight as far as his fights are concerned. He's won four out of the seven by way of knockout. That's a good straight right hand by Matata. It's probably come too late, though, because this has been a good round for Mvubu. In fact, I'm tempted to give Mvubu the round. Definitely, it's a good round for Mvubu. Uh, both boxers, I can tell you one thing, Kevin, they've forgotten about body punches. They only concentrate on the face. They've forgotten about the best punches in boxing, the body punches. So at the start of round number six, then the boxers asked to uh, tap hands and uh, back into their corners for the start of the sixth and final round of this middleweight contest. We're in Cajiso, the rumble in the ghetto. If this one goes to the scorecards, it, it could be a little closer than what we think. Yes. Oh, that's a Very solid right line. hand. Another solid right hand. Oh, three in a row. Down Ooh. goes Polani and Bubu. And Ooh. finally, the instructions are being adhered to. And Bubu is absolutely flat on his back. I can tell you one thing, Kevin. That is the punch. That is the punch that knocks a southpaw. Not a straight right. It's a right hook. It's a right hook. A swinging right. Well, he's he going needs for to the kill throw now. that again. Yeah, he's going for the kill Not now because he's just right. sticking with that straight right, right, right hands. Good, again. Goes he needs for the to left do hook. that again. He's trying to set him up with a left hook and he must give no rest punch whatsoever. He must throw that right hook again. This fight will be stopped. He's bleeding heavily from the nose and mouth is Augustine Matata. But uh, with that 10-8 round, if this does go to the scorecards, there's no doubt who the winner's going to be. Mbubu has really got to now try and knock Matata out, but it's Matata. Looking the more aggressive of the two fighters. Goes for a big swing. Blocks the uh, left hand from Polani and Bubu. It's a brave performance, but it looks as like it could be a losing one as we're now halfway through the sixth and final round of this uh, middleweight encounter. It's been an entertaining one. Very entertaining, very entertaining, Kevin. Uh, Matata needs to throw that punch again. He needs to throw that right hook again. Three of yeah. them in a row at the start of the round. Is, and... Uh, you can see the frustration of Kalani and Bubu because he slammed his left hand into the, uh, into the mat in the center of the ring when he went down taking the eight count because he knew he'd been a little silly and he was caught by those punches. Well, down he goes again. And this time he's in a spot of bother. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Survives the eight count once again. Does the Bubu. No, he doesn't. Well, Mbubu wants to continue. Mr. Bennett Kapai says high corner. And we have our third technical knockout victory of the evening. It came by the short route. And it's a very good victory for Augustine Matata, who went a little bit quiet in rounds four and five. But finally, in round number six, he went back to the instructions that came in rounds number three from his corner, Damien Durant. It's a good victory for Matata. Ladies and gentlemen, this middleweight contest brought to you proudly by Team Tida Boxing Promotions, was scheduled for six rounds. And referee Ben Napai puts a halt to the proceedings. The official time of the stoppage, two minutes, nine seconds, into your sixth round. And for your winner via TKO from the Duran team, Augustine. Big Ben Matata. Yeah, it was a good victory, William Khare. He came out, and, and, and while he might have had a little bit of a lull in rounds four and five, round six was absolutely dominant. And let's see what Lorato Pajo has to say when she talks to the winner, Augustine Matata. 
blood, sweat and all. Oh, what a captivating fight this was. Augustine, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm okay. And, uh, I'm very happy for tonight. I win my fight in knockout. I'm very happy. I say thanks for my coach, Damiel Diran. I say thanks for my coach again, uh, Anderson Kazembe. Uh, I thanks again for my big brother and my small brother, Emmanuel. Uh, I for, uh, not forgot uh, Flora. Thank you so much. Were you ever worried about the experience of your opponent? No, my uh, opponent had too much experience. To me, I'm seven fight now, like 23 fight. See, it's too much experience. Blood and all, like I said, but of course it delivered as far as entertainment is concerned. Now, do stay tuned. More boxing to follow after this.